As former President Donald Trump makes another run at the White House, he's partnering with a key U.S. ally on a new business venture. Laura Barone Lopez has more. The multi-billion dollar deal between Trump, the government of Oman, and a Saudi firm will develop a luxury complex, according to a new New York Times report. And the project is raising serious ethical questions. Joining me now is Eric Lipton of the New York Times. He's investigated Trump family international deals since 2016. Eric, thanks so much for joining. You traveled overseas to investigate this real estate deal, which is located in Yiti, Oman, along the coast east of Oman's capital city, Muscat. And you report that this deal is unlike any international deal so far that the Trump family has signed. Why? In this case, instead of simply having their name being sold to help increase the value of a golf course or condos, they're actually in business with the government of Oman, because the government of Oman owns the land and it's going to be taking a cut of the profits from this deal. And so they are now a partner of a government entity that is doing this multi-billion dollar project that has a 30-year contract with the Trump family. And it's not only for their name, they're going to be reviewing the hotel design, they're going to be helping build the golf course and the golf club and they're going to be managing the hotel and golf club for decades to come. So they're going to have a, a significant financial stake that involves the government of Oman itself. Mr. Trump was at the deal signing in New York City at Trump Tower with Saudi real estate executives in November. That was just before he announced his presidential bid. He's already brought in some $5 million from this project. Eric, how much does the former president stand to benefit? In fact, the Trump Organization and the Saudi real estate company that is the lead developer on the project would not tell us how much they're going to be paid. Uh, it's going to be in the tens of millions of dollars over the course of the, the, the life of the contract, but we just really have no idea because they won't tell us. And the, if he is, you know, as a candidate uh, and if he's reelected as president, he will have to file financial disclosure reports at least annually, and we'll get some idea of how much he's making in the next several years. But we don't know in total how much he's going to make. But it's a very big project. It's one of the biggest projects that the Trump family internationally has ever been involved in. That gets me to my next question, Eric, which is what are the potential conflict of interests here? Well, I mean, Oman is in a really sensitive location. I mean, it's just 20 miles across the Strait of Hormuz from Iran. It's, you know, right next to the United Arab Emirates and it's close to the Saudi Arabia. And it is sort of an intermediary between the, you know, the, the Saudi um, political concerns and the Iranian concerns. And it actually is a place where recently Biden administration officials have gone to, you know, protect, potentially talk to Iran about resolving some of our differences. So if, you know, at the same time as this is a country that we've, we've provided F-16 uh, fighter jets and missiles to, you know, and to think that then comes into the mix the considerations as to, well, how will this negotiation we're having over Iran or over Saudi Arabia, how might it impact our deal over managing a hotel and golf resort complex, and is it going to hurt our relationship with the Omani government, that that's even part of the calculus and, and, you know, is, is, and might they do a better deal for Oman because they have, you know, millions of dollars or billions of dollars riding on it is a question that a, an American president has never faced before. Right. That's if he were to be reelected again to office. And, and Eric, you report that this is not the only business deal that the Trump family has uh, crafted in the Middle East. Uh, federal prosecutors who recently charged Mr. Trump for mishandling classified documents were also seeking information about those other deals in the Middle East. Can you just connect the dots for us about why it matters that the former president has all of these ties to that region? I mean, again, it, to some extent, you'd say, well, if you look at what he did as president, it's not surprising. Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, was doing, you know, shuttle diplomacy in the Middle East as they were trying to reach some, you know, a decline in tension between Israel and some of the Arab nations. And, uh, you know, there, the Trump was quite engaged with Saudi Arabia after the Khashoggi murder and defending uh, actions there and downplaying uh, the role of the Saudi government. Uh, he was quite friendly with the Saudi Arabia. And so now, after he leaves off, his son-in-law gets two billion dollars worth of investment from the Saudi public, you know, uh, sovereign sovereign wealth fund, uh, and, and then the sovereign wealth fund always also funds LIV golf, and LIV golf puts several of its tournaments at Trump 
golf courses in the United States. And this, there's a lot of money between the Middle Eastern companies, be it in Saudi Arabia or now in Oman, and Trump business operations that overlap with his activities as president. What were those deals in reward for his actions as president? It's an open question. But again, we've never seen something like this, in, in, even in the aftermath of a presidency, where a president is profiting as much from a foreign government that he, foreign governments that he was closely active with during his presidency. Eric Lipton of The New York Times, thank you so much. Thank you.